Hello students, welcome to this video on the ideas and theories of John Locke. This guy, John Locke, although he may not look like much, trust me, he changed the world in the biggest way possible. This guy right here is responsible for most of the ideas, at least, for most of the things that are in our United States Declaration of Independence and Constitution. So let me tell you a little bit about Mr. Locke, a little bit about his theories and philosophies. So first of all, John Locke was a philosopher, which meant he thought about the way the world worked. And John Locke believed a few things were true. First of all, people are good and can be trusted generally. This is the big one right here. All people are born with natural rights, which means that they have certain rights just because they're born. And Mr. Locke came up with three categories of rights. First, life. Second, liberty. And property. And when John Locke was thinking about the way the world worked and thinking about government, he said, you know what? We have these kings out there that the purpose of government is basically to make them rich and powerful. That's not right. The real purpose of government is to protect the natural rights of citizens, protect people's life, liberty, and property. And that's not happening with a king. And second, there's this thing called the state of nature, this complete chaos that we'll talk about in a moment. But John Locke believed that government existed to prevent states of nature. So this right here, what John Locke thought about government, was revolutionary. You can believe kings didn't like this guy very much. Okay, so let's talk about our rights. According to John Locke, these are some of the basic rights that people have. And they are rights that most modern Americans take for granted because our government protects these things from us. First of all, anything that's a natural right to life is something that you need to survive. Food, safety, health, education, protection, water, basic life rights. In the liberty category, liberty means freedom. So John Locke believed that we had freedom to the speech, to free speech, press, religion, holidays, express ourselves with clothing, music, to like the kind of sports teams we like, to have free choices. And anything like this would fall into that liberty category. Then finally, the third category that John Locke believed in, that we had natural rights in, is property. That we have the right to own, buy, sell, trade, share, have privacy of our property, um, not have government interfere with our property, and then if we wanted to give our property away, we could do that. Okay, so John Locke believed that government existed to protect those natural rights for people. The second thing he believed in is that a state of nature should be protected as well. A state of nature is a situation where the rules or laws of government stop working and people's natural rights become violated. So a state of nature could be Something where even a good government, like even today in the United States, sometimes we have a state of nature because unforeseen events happen that can break into this thing where the state of nature is. And when this happens, good government takes actions to prevent these situations from happening again in the future. So a state of nature is any situation where there are no rules or laws or the rules or laws are ineffective to stop people's rights from being taken away. So here's an example of a state of nature right here. This poor kid is having his natural rights taken away. You can see right here, he's got his lunch taken away. That's his right to food, okay? His stuff is all over the ground. That's his right to privacy. And I bet he doesn't feel very safe right now. So that's his right to safety. And he's in school, so his right to education is being taken away. So right now, there either is no rules or laws to protect this kid's natural rights, or they're not working right. So right now is a state of nature because the government is not protecting this person's natural rights. Another state of nature, something we can't foresee happening like a tornado, but gov good government will put in some things to stop the tornado from taking away people's natural rights, like a tornado siren or, sto or require storm cellars. But that doesn't mean that the state of nature isn't going to damage some people's natural rights. A riot is another example of a state of nature where the police are ineffective. And then a state of nature that occurred um, not too long ago in our country, 9-11, where the terrorists flew planes into the Twin Towers. Um, since 9-11, we've put more and more laws into effect to prevent this kind of state of nature from happening, but certainly people's natural rights were violated on this day, a sad day in American history. Okay, so in the end, John Locke believes that government exists to protect people's rights and to stop states of nature. It's not to make kings rich and powerful. He also believed that sometimes there are situations where in order to protect someone's natural rights, you have to take away other rights. For example, you have a picture right here, no bare feet allowed. That is taking away someone's rights to liberty, to have a choice to not wear shoes. But in this particular case, the government's going to allow this dock owner 
to not allow bare feet because it's going to protect people's safety. Um, you could walk out onto the dock, get a nail in your foot, and then you would be injured. Or you could walk out onto the dock and not have proper footwear, slip and fall into the ocean, and drown. So sometimes you're going to notice in our society that we take away someone's natural rights. We don't have unlimited natural rights. We have natural rights within reason, and that's called a social contract where members of a society, society agree to give up some rights to protect others. We give up our right for bare feet to protect our safety. We give up the liberty to drive a car as fast as we want in order to protect um, safety as well. Normally, we give up liberty to protect safety. Um, that's usually what happens. But sometimes we give up um, safety to protect liberty. Right? Sometimes we give up property in the form of tax money to protect other rights as well. So we have a, a lot of social contracts in our society. So, to conclude, we all have, according to John Locke, we all have basic natural rights that most of us take for granted. The purpose of a government is to protect individual rights. It is not to make the king rich and powerful. So when John Locke wrote this stuff back when there was a king in like 1600, he didn't like John Locke very much. The other purpose of a government is to prevent a state of nature. And in the end, a good government is a social contract where members of a society agree to give up some rights to protect others, like the speed limit. We give up our right to drive fast to protect our right to safety. So that is John Locke and natural rights in a short video. Uh, we'll talk more about this in class um, next.